Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we're here today to talk about Battlefield 1's brand new game mode, Operations. Operations is one of two new modes that was introduced in Battlefield 1, and it's absolutely outstanding. You've probably already seen a lot of people on the internet speaking really highly of Operations, and I completely agree with all those people. It's a great game mode. It's probably the best thing that's happened to the Battlefield franchise since, since Conquest. If that even makes sense. But what I wanted to do today was actually break down and discuss why Operations is so good. Just why is everyone speaking so highly of this new game mode? What makes it tick? And what makes it one of the best experiences you'll have in Battlefield multiplayer? Let's start by talking about the presentation behind Operations. It's actually a separate entity. It has its own place on the Battlefield 1 menu can't find a match of operations simply by searching in the server browser or hitting the quick play button. DICE delivers each of these operations with a bit of narration, covering the overview of the battle, and they go one step further by including dialogue from soldiers, potentially leaders or captains, so on and so forth, discussing the battle as you load into a map or as you transition from one map to the next. Each operation is also inspired by an actual battle that took place during the Great War. For example, Kaiser's Battle, don't ask me to say the German for that, which features both the St. Quentin Scar and Amiens map, is based on the massive German Spring Offensive of 1918. Now there are four operations in total, each playable in 40 player or 64 players. I strongly recommend you go for the 64 player variant. It's like having vanilla ice cream with the chocolate dip rather than just vanilla ice cream. It's a much better experience. Each map is broken up into sectors. One side defends while the other side attacks. In order to push back the defenders, the attackers must capture and hold all of the points in a sector simultaneously. Now this is a mode that also functions on a, I guess you could call it a ticket system, it's more of a reinforcement system. The idea being that the attackers could, will, or could lose simply by running out of reinforcements. If the attackers do make it to the end of the map, pushing the defenders back through all of the sectors, they'll win the round, and depending on which map you're on in any given operation, you'll either end the match or move on to the next map. If the attackers are held at any point, they will be given an additional opportunity to capture that sector with the assistance of a dreadnought this time. Now the big marketing element of operations was the ability to fight a battle across multiple maps and environments. Dice said we could even look in the distance and see the old map. That is as it is. But I don't actually think there's any real value to the operations existing across multiple maps other than for the presentation, the cinematic value. Actual gameplay value? Zilch. None. Nada. What it really does is just extend the overall length of one specific match. But again, that's not what makes operations special. That may be the marketing element behind it. It's actually the core design of operations. It's the sector-based gameplay that makes it so special. Let me explain, and even better, let me demonstrate. Let us take a look at the St. Quentin Scar map as it functions inside of Conquest. We've got six capture points, A, B, D, C, E, and F, spread, you know, rather genuinely across the existence of this map. And then you'll have 64 players who will also be spread generously across the existence of this map. Conquest, as anyone who plays it knows, is very much a roller coaster ride. You might have some outstanding firefights around one capture point, and there's just really great moments and memories made, and 15 minutes later, you might capture two points with little to no resistance. It's this constant up and down that's simply the byproduct of having 64 players on such a large environment with capture points that are spread very far apart. Now, that's obviously what makes Conquest work. It simply wouldn't function in any other way. But let's take a look at the SCAR map in one specific sector as it would function inside of the operations game mode. This is sector four. It has three capture points, A, C, and B, two of which are in a completely new location, a location that previously never had a capture point if you were playing in Conquest. And we have 64 players in this one sector. You cannot leave the boundaries of this sector. So what has happened here is we've increased player density when we've also increased the number of capture points for players to fight over. This is at the core of what makes operations so damn good. What this does, this design that you're seeing right here, is it drives everything up to 11. There's a larger number of players in a smaller area, 
There are more capture points in a smaller area, which means that you're creating more micro environments for intense, large player number firefights to happen. It's the best parts of Conquest and Rush fused into one. You have that same consistent attack and defend environment where one team is always looking to push an objective while the other team is always looking to defend it. But you have that larger scale map play element of Conquest. We all know that Battlefield is at its best when you're in those really intense, wonderful firefights. That's where I love Battlefield. That's where so many people love Battlefield. So when you put 64 players in this sector and you give them three points to fight over, you're going to have almost on a regular basis these massive, you know, like 20 player firefights breaking out at any of these three points. It's glorious. And the icing on the top of the cake here is that each of these capture points for the most part, or at least some of them, are going to allow you to fight on a large scale in an environment that you previously wouldn't have been able to fight on a large scale in. For example, the B capture point in Sector 4, there's no capture point in Conquest on that location. That means that that wonderful location, which I think is so well designed, you've got a great little you know, sort of triangulation of buildings, You've got this, you know, low wall and the little courtyard there. It's a place that is just, it's ready. It's ripe for a really great firefight. But on Conquest, you're lucky if you shoot three or four people there. You're lucky if you engage maybe a tank there. In operations, you're almost guaranteed to have like a 10 versus 10 firefight. People shooting from windows, tanks rolling in, people, you know, jumping over the low wall trying to capture the point. Dense, dense layers of smoke and gas. Everyone is running around with a gas mask on. The entire area, this like 20 by 20 foot sector, is just caked in thick green gas and smoke. It is so absolutely fantastic. It is a proper level of controlled chaos that provides a near endless supply of battlefield moments. It's like it's Halloween and DICE is just throwing out goodie bags to every single player loaded with Battlefield moments. When you put this many players in one sector and you give them this many points to fight over, and you give them all their tools, all their equipment, you allow the existence of tanks and planes, things are going to get crazy in the best possible way. That is operations, and that is what makes it so absolutely kick-ass. If you guys have any other questions for me in regards to how operations functions, please feel free to throw them down in the comment section below. Battlefield 1 is releasing tomorrow for everyone who bought the standard edition. Maybe you'll be playing it tonight at midnight. If you do, I strongly recommend making operations your very first Battlefield 1 multiplayer experience. You will not regret it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.